My name is Virginia Stoymanoff, and we're going to do an interview today with Bob Pappas at his home at 104 RJ. The date today is Thursday, March the 10th. Bob, we're going to we'll ask you a few questions. Bob, we're going to go right back to the beginning of uh, your life in the old country. Can you tell us first uh, where you were born and the date of your birth? I was born in a village of Genevo, Macedonia, September the 21st, 1912. So that makes you now 82. Almost. Almost, yes. <laughs> what was your village like? Uh, when, uh, what do you remember of your village there? When I was born, there was uh, a war on, a Balkan war, and people were frightened. Everybody stayed indoors. In 24 hours, the Greek army came in, something we never seen before. Your parents had uh, told you all this, that you were, you were just a baby yes, at that time? Yes, in fact, yes. And believe it or not, I was born that night. Oh. Uh, your, uh, tell us about your uh, parents. Who were your, uh, uh, who were your parents, your dad or baba? Uh, my grandmother's name was Tsveta, and my grandfather's name was Lambro. My father's name was Tase, and my mother's name was Tanaska. Do you, know, uh, do you remember their uh, maiden names? Yes, my mother's maiden name was Gamov. She was a family of nine children, five brothers and four sisters, and my mother was second from last. So you have a, a very large family now. Uh, yes, we did. Yes, we did. Tell us a little about your uh, life as you remember it in your village. As a little boy. When I was four years old, and I was able to go out and look around the neighborhood, there was a French army there. that the world has, world number one has started. And in another few weeks, they occupied our house, the French, and they wired it for a telephone exchange, our house being on the top of a hill above the village. And I spent four years with these people. The French soldiers? The French army. I got, I befriended one of the little officers. I was, I was just a young boy, and he took a liking to me. So I used to go down in the village, in the center of the village, and when they were given dinner the, for the army, for the battalion that was in the village, I used to stand on the end of the line. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the officer apparently used to wink at the chef. <laughs> I, had to, I had to be pot. And he'd fill it up. I could carry it up. So we had lots of food. We had lots to eat. Oh, well, However, in 1915, things were very bad for the for the Allies, for the French army, because the uh, the all the the boats and that the Germany had cut off, and uh, people were starving. And the by 1916, they ate all the livestock, including the dogs. There was no other way. But there, was there actual combat in your area? Not yet, no. The combat was in 1917, in our area. The Germans had actually come uh, that far? No, only by airplane. But they, they cut off the, the supplies through the Mediterranean. And uh, overland they took uh, Yugoslavia, what they call Serbia. And there was no way that uh, the French army could be supplied. So even and of dogs. course, Turkey was with, with Germany, their allies with Germany. In 1917, they broke the blockade. And finally, in 1918, the war was over and there was a big celebration in the village. And one of my aunts, my mother's sister, she ran away with a Frenchman. Would you believe? Yeah, well, that happens during wars. She ended up with a Frenchman. Yeah. 
So that was uh, my life at that time when I was six years old. Now, your uh, house, you say, was on the top of a hill. Yes, it was. Oh, uh, how big of a house, and who all lived in that house? It was a six-room house, and we all slept in one room. Oh. With, with a one fireplace, and uh, and uh, on a on a straw mat. Who was uh, all uh, in your uh, house? You say you all. At slept. that time, it was uh, uh, my my mother, my brother, my younger brother, and myself, the two grandparents. And there was a, another lady married to a, my father's brother, which he was in America at that time. He, she had a boy. So we all slept in the one room. Including your mother and father? Yes. The, um, oh, who else were, uh, how, how, um, how many houses approximately uh, in your village, uh, how were they scattered? May, uh, tell us a little about Jelovo. Well, they're, they're good. It was a good village. It was a good size, as I told you, 2,600 people. Lots of hills? Yeah, and uh, oh yes. It was a river nearby, and on, 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 either, on both sides there was mountains, huge mountains. And a river, and the river was our lifeline. Along the river we, we used to cultivate the land and keep, uh, you know, a little uh, livestock, a horse a cow, and so on. Your family kept that? Everybody, almost. There was no outside work anywhere in that village. Oh, that was my next unless question. You went, yeah, unless you went to ancient Greece or, uh, or up north, which was all in turmoil. Things were very bad in the Balkan area. Mm -hmm. and in, in 1917, uh, they broke the blockade, the Allies. Was there uh, fish in that river? A little fish, yeah. So you went fishing? Um... Oh, yes. Uh, we used to go, and we had no fishing uh, rods. <laughs> How did you but, fish? Well, we used to throw firecrackers. <laughs> Into the water? Into the water. And, uh, uh, and the fish were stunned. Then we jump in the water and grab the fish and throw it on land. Well, that's, that's an interesting way. <laughs> It was a very and lovely invention. Us kids, all the firecrackers are from uh, from the. We used to steal it from the French army headquarters. We knew what they were because they kept them for celebrations, you know, for a victory. Uh -huh. And we know we knew what they were, and we got them off the boxes. And as kids, you swam in that river too. Oh well, yes, of course. Yes, we did. Uh, what kind of uh, uh, work did your father do? A farmer, uh, farmers. So it was all farming? Uh, absolutely. Everybody was a farmer. The land of the village was divided with straws. This piece of land, they divided, let's say, how many families in the village. And they divide the land, and then they pull straws with a number on it. Which lot falls to you? That's yours. Uh, was the land uh, fairly good? Was it arable? Not all of it, but they also did, did give you a piece of the forest, you know, in the higher ground. So the land was 100% divided among the village families. It was like a socialistic setup and very friendly. Uh, everybody loved each other. There was two churches, two priests. What kind of churches were they? To Orthodox churches. Of course, it was all in Greek. And that's what I mean. So they, they were both uh, Greek churches. Yes, they did not. There was no Bulgarian church? N no. Uh, now, when you were going to uh, school, when did you first start to go to school? 1921. Due to the war. Mm -hmm. And due to the, uh, uh, that part of Macedonia was given to Greece for helping defeat the Bulgars and the Turks. The Allies, England particularly, give that section of Macedonia, which they still have to this day. And they so that's the reason up. they gave it to them. <laughs> Pardon? That's, uh, that's a, 
uh, we always wonder what reason uh, they they decided to give that. By to Greece Britain. staying neutral and helping the Allies by every means they could without going to war. So in 1921 you started school. What yes. grade did you start? <laughs> Surprising. My mother took me to school by order by the authorities and the mayor of the city, which is spoke both languages, Greek and uh, and uh, Bulgarian. And uh, they took me in there and uh, I sit there and he says, uh, what's your name? Borgin. So he asked my mother, what's his name? She says, it's Borgin, that's all. He was born like Borgin. Well, he says, that's not a Greek name. We got to change that. So he changed my name to Chris. Borgin means Borgi, like you know, the Christmas time. Uh -huh. He said, we're going to name him Chris. Oh, no, she says, you can't do that. I don't want that. That's, that's my mother, Borg's name, and that's going to be. So they left it. They called me Borgi. And I didn't uh, get, uh, it, was your Macedonian name Pappas, or did they change no. it at that time? Uh, yes, right away. Because our family, in, in times gone by, they had priests. They had two priests. Original priest came from Constantinople, and his two nephews became priests in the village. Greek priests, in Greek, but they spoke our uh, Slavic they, language. Oh, they spoke Macedonian and they spoke... Uh, yes, including the original. And, uh, well, what was your family name? Well, it remained as Pappas. No, uh, what was it before? It was Constantine, oh. and there was Risto, and there was Lauro, and so on. But uh, the, the nickname, or the nickname, remained Papas. Oh, okay, so, well... Uh, it was like the... Like, what was your father's uh, name before, your la his last name? Well, they go by their fathers. Yes. That's the Lombro. Lombro. And then Lombro, uh, uh, Risto, and then... Constantine Papas, the, the priest. Okay, so uh, your name became Papas after the Greeks came. Is that is that correct? Even before. Oh, even before. Okay. Yeah, because they were, in Greek, Papas means Pope. Yes. Priest. And uh, um, who else was uh, in your family? You know, how many brothers and sisters did you have? I had one brother before the war. After the war, I had a sister born 22, 24 a brother, and 26 a sister. So, so, we, uh, had, so we had uh, three brothers and two sisters. So there were five of you all together. And, uh, and you're second in uh, line, second oldest. I was first. Oh, you're first. First born, yeah. Oh. My brother, unfortunately, he, he was, he got killed. He was with the partisans in the Civil War in Greece. That was in, uh, uh, that was later. 1948. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, uh, you, uh, you went to school in um, Gélevo. Yes. In the Greek school. Yes. And um, uh, what grades were you, well, how far did you go? Where, I finished public school. And it started in grade one yeah. to grade. Yes, I jumped two grades. To, uh, to what grade did you finish? How from, many? Uh, from one to three, and from three to five. And uh, then I graduated. I was all together. I graduated in 1927 from public school uh -huh. in Greek. So of course you're fluent in Greek. Yes. And uh, what the, what decided, uh, what made you uh, come to this country? What kind of uh, life were you having there? And uh, tell us a little about your your ideas of coming to uh, Canada. My father came here in 1927 20, to well, Canada. He came first. Yes, he was here. And when I graduated, uh, Greece, the government or the mayors, whoever they were responsible, they want me to go to Athens and teach me in the military, as a military officer. 
And so this was uh, age 14. I was 14. Yeah. And uh, I wrote a letter to my father. And he really got mad. Because he didn't like the Greeks at all. So he sent $200 to an agent in Lerin, in New York City. And he told them, the fare is $150. You keep $50. I want my son out of Greece. Send him to America. Yes. And I went to the mayor. I wanted to, uh, I said, I, my father wants me to go to America. My mother wanted to go to America. He said, no way. You're a Greek. You're going to go to Greece. You're going to go to Africa. He's going to be a big Greek someday. Anyhow, he won't give me a uh, certificate. And the mayor was Greek, was he? No. Yeah. Nash. 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 Oh. Was Nash. So I went to Lerin, and I tell the agent what happened. He happened to be Macedonian. He says, my kata, I'll fix those Greeks. He says, you come here, I'll tell you what day, secretly. You come to Lerin, and I'm going to cross you across the border to Serbia, or what they call Yugoslavia. Uh -huh. And he did. At night, he had all the passport, he had all the papers, and I went to Bitola. I went to the train. He says, don't go anywhere, just go to the train. Don't ask any authorities or what, because you're going to get in trouble. So I went to the train, and I waited. As soon as the train stopped, and it said they're Belgrade. I, got, I hopped in the train, and the Serbian army came over, the officer, and he says to me, passport. I says, I gave it to him. He just looked at it. He says, okay. And he went by. And the rest of them followed him, check all everybody. And we cleared the Greek border. In other words, we're into Yugoslavian territory. So, by golly, I was so happy. It was so dangerous. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had three dollars. In the rush, my mother, she gave me three one dollar bills, America. And she put it around my neck with a string with a little piece of cloth. Uh -huh. So I see these girls going by selling grapes with a little basket. And I was so hungry. So I jumped out of the train. It was still not going. And I... And I so you saw the girl uh, from the train uh, with the grapes. What, what did you do? I went at the step of the train and I jumped out and I wanted the girl, I got the dollar in one hand, and I wanted some grapes. So she, she gave me the whole basket and took the dollar. She understood. She must have realized it was America. And she ran. And I'm waiting for the chance she's gone. <laughs> so everybody from the train, they're watching. They start to laugh. So I got in the train with grapes, and I started, started to eat grapes. And that was my lunch, all the way to Belgrade. Was that a very train. long trip? Yes. Four or five hours. Oh. Yeah. Be before we uh, continue on your trip, let's go back to uh, some of the life uh, in uh, Jerevo. Uh, tell us about uh, some of the uh, holidays, uh, Easter, how you celebrated it. The best times were after the war, after the First World War. Thing, things have settled down, and in Greece there was a good prime minister. His name was Venizelos. This man told the parliament, give this minority their rights mm -hmm. and let them become Greeks eventually. And he was from Crete, this Venizelos. And he relaxed. The minute he relaxed, all the holidays, Christmas, Jurgen then, Petro then, and so on. We used to celebrate in the in the village, in the center of the village. All the girls would dress up beautifully. 
I wish I could see him just like that Mike Adonka that you have here uh -huh, in uh -huh, Toronto, uh -huh. the group. And uh, it was tremendous. Very, very beautiful. And uh, everybody was happy. No interference. There was a police detachment in the village with a telephone exchange in case of trouble. And they let us free. They were, were singing and drinking, tables all over the, in the center of the village. Everybody was happy. Everybody was intermarrying. There was no animosities or nothing. It was beautiful. Intermarrying, meaning Macedonians with Greeks? Or no Greek. Marrying Greco-Mani and uh, so-called so Bulgaro-Mani. You know what I mean? There yes. was a, there was a... <laughs> but they were all Macedonian. They all were Yeah. But uh, due to the, to the religion, yeah. some of them were had their, their leaning towards the, uh, the Slavic. Yeah. And some were leaning to the pro-Greek. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful time. And as I say, uh, I'll never forget it. Did your mother make lots of Zolnitsi and things like that? Mother, she was beautiful. She was absolutely beautiful. Work, I've never seen now, I realize. Where my mother used to get up six in the morning, feed the little kids, and, and my grandmother was elderly, and she'd leave the little kids, four of them, and she'd go out to work on the fields. Whatever it was, harvest time, planting time, and so on. She'd come in at sundown. Then she had to make supper. She. I used to watch her. It was fascinating. So your Baba really looked after all the kids. Poor Baba, poor Baba. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> poor Baba. <laughs> I, was, I was her best friend. Yeah. I was very no. She, <laughs> Baba. And every day she, your mother would go out into the field. All day. It, 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 oh, Baba. She used to send me to the general store. That's the other thing I wanted to ask. What yes. kind of stores were there in the yes, village? Yes, there was two stores there. They're all Romanians. Oh. Yes. And uh, they, you know, uh, the store was just like Becker's here. It was well stocked. They had everything necessary, you know, for the, for the village people. And uh, my grandma used to send me down to buy a, a little bottle of brandy. And she had a little private jewelry box, and she used to lock it in there. And of course, she was afraid I might spill, I might snitch on her. Oh, who was this, dear? My grandmother. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, you know. <laughs> so she says, what would you like for lunch today? I saw one scrambled eggs with feta cheese. You know, we saw uh -huh. the cheese. She says, okay. She'd cook it up. I feel so good. She said, don't you tell your mother about <laughs> brandy. And then she took a couple of swigs of the brandy. And I went on and on until I left in 1927 with Grandma. She was so beautiful. Mm. Yeah. And um, the holidays like Easter, uh, tell us how you mm. celebrated Easter and, and Tremendous uh, Christmas. celebration in the center of the village. All Slavic dances like we have here. Just like we have here at the churches uh -huh. and at the Macedonian Hall. Exactly the same. And when I listen to uh, when I uh, listen to the radio and that, they're exactly the same. It was a hundred percent Slavic. At Christmas too? Well, how did you celebrate Christmas? Christmas? The service was in Greek, you know, the priest and the chanters. But the woman in the back room, they're all chit-chatting in Macedonia. From time to time, the priest would say, Malchet <laughs> Jenny. You know, <laughs> they, they, they shut up for about a minute, then the gossip starts again. Now, how did you celebrate it within your family? Our family, yes. We have uh, Easter eggs. We saved them. We only had two chickens. And uh, we used to save the eggs. But Grandma used to give me scrambled eggs and cheese. <laughs> Whenever she, uh, when she, she <laughs> wants to in, keep you quiet. She go in the hen house and think we're not going through. <laughs> I don't know. So you were her special love. Uh, yes. Uh, we had a conspiracy with Grandma, the two of us. <laughs> it was wonderful, really. And when I left, I left secretly in the middle of the night. 
And they didn't know? No. Your mother or your grandmother didn't know? They knew I was leaving, but I left. And your father had left uh, a year before, he yes. left in 1927. He was in, he was in Toronto. Yeah. But what made him come to Toronto? He, there was absolutely no hope with the Greek uh, government there. There was absolutely no hope for anybody getting a job. He had to go outside the country. And they're, they're going. They're going to Bulgaria, they're coming to America, they're coming to uh, Australia. People were leaving, all the men, and they left their wives and children at home. So, uh, uh, how did he uh, come? Do you, do you know what, anything about uh, how he came? Uh, oh, did, did brother, someone, was someone his, here? Yeah, his what? brother was there. So his brother his sponsored brother, yeah. him to yeah. spend him money. Right, the, you know, the lady and, and the boy, which we grew up together. I see. Yeah, yeah. He sent the money and my father took off. He came to Canada. Thank God. Yeah, who was your uh, uncle here? Uncle Paul. Paul? Paul. Uh, Last name? Pampas. Oh. And, um, well, we'll get back now. Uh, uh, is there anything else about the village that uh, we forgot to mention? Yeah, oh, I know what I wanted to ask. Uh, what other ethnic uh, uh, minorities were in your village? You say no. Romanians. Were there no, uh, the storekeepers? Just storekeepers. That's all. Uh, what their family was there? there. No, no families. Just a man himself. Oh. And uh, there was a little village not far, which uh, is a Romanian village, or or Roman village, you might say. He was there two thousand years since the Byzantine Empire. Uh -huh. And the women, they were like the Turkish women. They never work on the fields. They never got out of the house. But the man used to go all over the area and open stores in every village, general stores. The man. Oh. Uh, were there no uh, Jews or um, uh, other nationalities? There was no Jews at all. Uh, there was no gypsies. And uh, they used to come in the summer, the gypsies. Uh -huh. They used to come from Hungary and bring wrestling bears and selling horses and, and, and stealing everything. <laughs> On one occasion, uh, I was, uh, my father was plowing a field and he had the oxen, you know. And when the sun was up, I, I got out of school and I went to look after the pair of and I had a little uh, sack, a knapsack and a little food and I was sitting on a rock in, on the highway and the oxen were, gra you know, they were grazing and here comes a bunch of gypsies with horses with, with jingle bells. All the horses had bells on them oh, yeah. and you know they draw your attention. So they come over and the beautiful gypsy girl, she stopped. And she says to me, you are a nice boy. And she had her nails all painted, and big earrings, and she had lipstick. She said, I'm going to tell you a fortune. So she got hold of my hand. She, I was fascinated because all the women were, you know, mm -hmm. the poor things, they, were, they had no makeup, they had nothing. They had kerchiefs on them. And she started to tell me the, the fortune. And she told me to go far away, you're going to have seven kids and all this. And I was fascinated. And then she took off. And I'm watching her running out, you know, the gypsy woman. I turned around, the knapsack was gone. Oh! How the hell she stole it, I'll never know. She stole it. And I was hungry all day. When I went home, my mother put me to bed without supper. Oh, <laughs> yeah. she said, teach you, teach you a lesson. Yeah. That's one of the small incidents in my young life, but it was beautiful. Okay, well, we're going to leave your village now, um, and we're going to go back on uh, your trip to uh, Canada.
Yeah. So, uh, I think we left when you were uh, in Belgrade. I left, I left uh, uh, Vitola. Mm -hmm. And you went and to Belgrade? I went to Belgrade and they just changed trains there. There was all kinds of fuss and bus, as you know, any station. And I, I spoke some, uh, I could understand the uh, Serbian. And I got, I got my way where to go, what train, uh, for Italy. And I got in the train, there was no problem. And uh, we went to Italy, and from Italy we changed trains again. We went through uh, Switzerland, into France, all the way to uh, Paris. And we went in Paris, a tremendous amount of people, never seen anything like it in my life. And they, they tied us up with a rope, so we wouldn't get lost. How so many were you? There must have been a hundred people from all over. Oh. From Russia, from Germany, from everywhere. But you were the only one from... Uh, from Jello. A little orphan. And <laughs> anyhow, they... We stayed overnight. They gave us something to eat. The next day, they took us for a train to Le Havre. Like, near Sherwood. Uh -huh. You know, near the English coast, where the big liners were. Oh, yeah. And they took us over there, and uh, uh, I see that there are people undressing, all the men. They're undressing. So there was two women, heavy set women, elderly. They said, Hale, Hale, take your clothes off. So I had to. I took my clothes off, and they're dumping them in big pots, boiling pots, and they're de lousing them. I didn't know that they were doing that. They're killing the borscht. Yeah, know? yeah. And I went in, and they turned the water on. You know? I saw these men. Never seen a naked man in my life. <laughs> in the, in the old, country, old country, there's no such thing to see a man naked. Never. And anyhow, I got through there and was shaking like a leaf. So the next morning, they took us to the liner, Mauritania, where it's way out. And they took us in it, and we made, it's like a city. It looks so big. The ship. Yeah. And it took off. He left there, I think it's in my passport, on the 7th of March. 7th of March, 1928. 28. And uh, before we got into, we're passing Newfoundland. <coughs> and all of a sudden, I see people running on, on deck, on top of the deck. And it was something to see. And I ran out too. I looked, a huge iceberg. Ooh. Monster. Never see anything. Like that in my life. Huge iceberg. And anyhow, they were far away. It was So we got into the channel, into New Brunswick. We got off in New Brunswick. And uh, the trains, they had bells on them. Jingy, bingy, jingy. In, in Europe, the trains, they were whistling. Here, they got a big bell on them. And I thought it was a church. Anyhow, they put us into the train. How long of a trip was that on the ship? Uh, seven days. Seven days. Yeah. Seven days. So we got on this train, we went to Montreal, and off you go. No English, couldn't speak nothing, all French. So I went in the, in the Union Station, like in Montreal, and I was hungry, really hungry. So I had two dollars left. And I gave the guy one dollar, and I got a loaf of bread and a, and a little block of cheese, you know. I had was cheese. So when I went in the train, and I started to eat the bread, and I took a bite of the cheese, it was so... So, oh! <laughs> it was so... And everybody in the train started to, to laugh. I didn't know what to do. Oh, so stupid. I never I didn't speak the language. It looked like cheese. It was square. Anyhow, 
I lived where I ate the bread. So I came in Toronto, and uh, the incident was that uh, I got, got off the Union Station, and I had a card. Papaza, B. Papaza, Toronto, Canada. Papaza. So, Papaza. Oh. Oh yeah, that's how my father said the. Uh, he was so. Uh, instead of papas, he was so mad against the Greeks. He put a, he put F F on it, my father. Mm -hmm. So, I got out of the Union Station. There's nobody. Everybody's running this way, that way. I don't know what to do. I'm looking around, can't see my father. He's supposed to meet me. Anyhow, I put the little paper luggage I had in a blanket, a red blanket, and I'm looking around. A black man, he comes around and he grabs my luggage. So I grabbed him. And, you know, I was going to kill him. I, I thought he was stealing it. The policeman came over, you know, with a bowl hat for him. And he came over and he took this bat and out and he says to the Negro, put, put it down, whatever he told him. He put it down. He was a, a porter. A porter trying to take the luggage in the <laughs> to get a taxi cab or whatever. Anyhow, the Negro he smiled at me with beautiful white teeth. Never seen anything like that. But I never liked him ever since, because he tried to steal my luggage. <laughs> so I got outside on Front Street, nothing, no father, and I started to cry. First time I started to cry. And I'm looking and standing on the, sitting on the top of the luggage. I see the guy weaving down the street coming in. My father had a big mustache, yeah, handlebar mustache. Mm -hmm. I never saw the sweetest man in my life. <laughs> I got him, I kissed him. And we took the streetcar and we went on, on New Lock and Sinclair. That's what I sell. Yeah. You must have been very scared on that trip. Just a young I was frightened because I couldn't communicate. Right, yeah. There was no Slavic or Greek. All the way. Since I left France, or mm -hmm. entered France, to Toronto, no, there was no no language, foreign, everything, not even a word. No, it was a French language. ship, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, on Friday, Friday afternoon, Nicolas family, we. Uh, Give me something to eat. Here comes an Irishman, walks in, boom, boom, with a little card that somebody arrived here from overseas. And we got scared. What's it all about? He says, This boy has to go to school Monday. <laughs> they gave us the Davenport Public School. How did they know that uh, there was somebody that came? He followed the immigration department, I guess, and the age of the person. And this was the first day that you were there? Uh, on Friday, as soon as I... You arrived on the Friday? On Friday, in the afternoon he came. And he said, this boy's got to go to school on Monday. That well, was a good thing, you know. Yeah, it was a good thing. Really? Yeah. So they took me to school on Davenport. Davenport and they don't know what school. to do with it. And uh, they're trying to get my name, Borgia. Terrible name. They said, my name is Borgia. My uncle Paul, he was with me. He doesn't know it. The teacher says, well, I'll tell you what you do. I'm going to change him to Bob. Borgia, Bob. He says, okay. Okay. So they named me Bob. And you've been Bob ever since? Ever since. But eventually, you know, when I was in the dairy business, I changed it to Robert, a little more sophisticated. <laughs> yeah. And I cut the papas off, off to papas. I went back to the original name. Because when I went in the dairy business, uh, that name was a detriment to me. You know, it was hurting me. Mm -hmm. 
most of the people in Metro, they were pro-Greeks. They went into, with the Greek restaurants. They picked up the, the restaurant business. They opened the, their own restaurants, but they were pro-Greek. And with the Papazov, it didn't work at all. Mm -hmm. So I went and cut the name off, and I was welcome after that. So the, the family you stayed with was... Um, Nikolov. Paul Nikolov? Yeah. And um, did they have a big family? What kind of house was it? Oh, that, yes. Uh, it was a six-room house. And they had a little uh, uh, convenience store in the corner of Sinclair and, uh, and Kiel. And uh, my father got a job working in a bowling guy, or he was working at a bowling guy, cleaning at night. Oh. Night time. And uh, she stopped, stopped giving me dinner after the thing wore out. My father, I guess he was After what war out? After the, you know, the welcome. Oh. <laughs> and uh, then she put up supper and she won't call me in. And uh, that was very sad for me. Yes. <laughs> I used to buy a, a pint of milk and a loaf of bread and then I, she let me use the, the you know, the gas burner. So I used to heat the milk and, and chop up the bread and eat it. That's all I... That's how I, for weeks, finally I told my, I went to see my father. Oh, your father wasn't living with you? He was, he was there, but he was always, I couldn't see him. He worked at night, at daytime I was in school, and in the afternoon he was gone somewhere. I could never see him. And uh, it was very sad. So, there was an uncle down the street, my mother's brother. Mm -hmm. I went over to his place, and I asked him if I can move. Oh, sure, he says, you can move, but you got to cost you five dollars a month, you know, room and board, and you're going to sleep with another guy, another nephew. Yeah. Well, what was their name? Christy, Yamo, my mother's family. I see. Yeah. And uh, I moved. I took off. And... Uh, I was there about a year, maybe maybe longer, in my uncle's house. And so how I long still did you go to school? Oh, as I was going to say, how long well, uh, did you uh, go to school? Well, the following year, uh, 1929, I went to to Davenport Public School. Uh -huh. And uh, my father, he had a cousin that he had a, a restaurant on King at Dufferin. Not restaurant, but a snack bar, mm -hmm. little place. And he told my my father, "Now that you boys here, why don't you go and I'll I'll sell you this uh, lunch room because I'm not making any money. They're stealing me, you know. Some people are running it." And he says, "Oh sure." My father said, "I got no money. That's okay." He says, uh, "You can owe me. It was a thousand dollars." So my father came in. He rented an apartment. King and Doctor in a high rise apartment. And we went in the store. And he says to me, It's up to you now. To me? He says, You speak English, you speak uh, Greek, you speak uh, you can read and write. Now he says, You go get a license. To run the restaurant. To, to open the restaurant. But to run the restaurant, uh -huh. change the name. So I'm looking around, looking around. Finally, Somebody told me there's a Macedonian lawyer in, in Toronto. So he took it down. He was down in Young. What was his name? Do you remember? John Grudev. Yeah, I, th I thought that would be the one. And uh, his secretary was a guy, Gordon Mitchell. Uh huh. So I go downtown and I'm looking. At, I, 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 I found the place. So I'm upstairs and. Uh, I tried to speak to the, the Gordon Mitchell in English when I grew them. He said, what do you, what do you want? You know, he's talking to me in English. Yes, 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 Gordon Mitchell says to me, you know, he uh -huh. realized that we're, we're not communicating. Right. I didn't speak English. 
So he took me to Gurudev, and Gurudev was wonderful. Yeah. Gurudev had nothing to worry. He took over. He went down, he got a lease from the Evrain, he got a license to, uh, to work at a little restaurant. And we started with Father. What was the name of that restaurant? Dufferin. Dufferin Restaurant. And how long uh, did you have that with your father? A life lifesaver, that restaurant. We got in there with Dad. We, he's a good worker, so was I. And we decorated it. We cleaned it up. We put one, white tables, you know, instead of those dark ones. We put white tables. We put the lights in the front. Uh, we cleaned up the, uh, you know, the, the window. We put a sign in there, lovely signs and little flowers. People start to come in. I don't speak English. My father, by that time, in a year's time, you know, he hardly spoke anything. And we started in a restaurant. Then. Who did the cooking? A Chinaman. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The Chinese. They're good, I'll tell you. Twelve hours a day they work. I have no trouble with them. They're good. And no politics, no language, nothing. Just yes and no. They knew what they're doing. They used to give me the menu. And uh, as such as it was, you know, a few things, corned beef and cabbage or Irish too. And uh, I got on with it. I got on. What did you do in the restaurant? I was outside. So was Father. But Father was doing like a busboy. And I was getting, I was the boss. I was on the cash. I know how to ring the cash register and so on. And I used to go take two hours in the afternoon. I used to go downtown, get off on uh, Young Street, and walk up and down Young, north, and go into Greek re restaurants and steal menus. Oh. <laughs> and I got caught. I got caught in one of the restaurants. And uh, the waiter told the boss, this guy, and uh, it was five cents Coke. I used to get a little Coke, I said. And the Greek guy says to me, you know, you, in Greek, you know, they got a thin vocabulary, the Greeks. And right away I spotted that he's Greek. You know, the Greeks, when, uh -huh. they, when they order, they say, we say chicken sandwich, they say chicken. Yeah. You know, they can't use the je. Sure, yeah. So, she says, are you Greek? And she says, Ella pedimo mi veli, aman. My boy may even speak to me in Greek. You're a Greek, you're this and that. And he helped me out. I used to go to him, and uh, he, he always told me what, what to order, how to order. He was teaching me. I understood Greek, naturally. Mm -hmm. And I got going, and we had a big success on King and Dufferin with my dad. Terrific. We made a tremendous. Not only that, one day, there was Royal Winter Fair, you know. Because that's uh, right close to the exhibition, yes. at the restaurant. Yeah. And the guy came in and uh, he said, what do you got? I said, what would you like? You want a meal? You want a sandwich? He said, I want a sandwich. So I'll tell you what I do. I said, I'll give you a chicken sandwich and brown bread, brown toast, with lettuce. So that looks good. So I gave it to him. He had coffee. And he says, son, I'm from the stockyards. <laughs> Hell knows who's stockyard. He says, he gave me his card. I want you to come and see me. So I went and saw him. He took me around the building, downstairs. No, downstairs was a restaurant a woman was running. But it was awful, dirty. He says, you want this? Yours. To run the restaurant at uh, Canada Packers? N yeah, no, across. The livestock. Oh, I, I see. The Union Stockyards. In the in stock uh -huh. building, in the, uh, where they, all the farmers used to go and get their money and sell their, their livestock. And uh, by golly, people are going like flies upstairs. And uh, okay, so the guy gave me 10 years lease. 
I got through that again. And we really made a good job in that restaurant. I got all my relatives in, all my uncles, my cousins, we're all working in there. All the Macedonian girls, you know, the, uh, the woman of, uh, uh, what's his name, from Vando? The woman, Sophie and Donna. I have Mrs. Angelina, uh, what's her name, uh, the tobacco man? Rana. Pardon? Rana. Rana? Yeah. Ine Rana, his wife. Angelina. Oh, yeah. All the Macedonian girls, the whole clan from Ontario Street, all of them. And I give the business to Teddy, he, he passed away, didn't he? The Bulgarian guy, mm -hmm. Donna's husband. Oh, Kochev. Kochev. Yeah. yeah. I gave him the, he, he got a job with the Western Bread, and I used to buy 50 loaves a day. Yeah. Farmers, hundreds of farmers, hungry. They come in the morning, they want a steak with two eggs. Yeah. The farmers. They're terrific. And we... Uh, so we how got, long uh, did you have that uh, uh, restaurant there at the stockyards? Until the war started, the Second War. 1940, uh, 1939. 1940. And then, then I got I got a car, and I met Violet in 1932 at the picnic, Labor Day picnic. And, uh, you know, the usual Macedonian band and all the dancing. There. And your father used to come there. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of them, Silo, Nichols, and him, they all used to be there. And they, uh, I see this chick. She was, she had a, 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 a fleet thing, you know, and her hair was cut, her neck was clean, you know, all shaved. Yeah. And she come around talking to a little boy in a chair. And I says, oh boy, you know, I've seen in, well, the, in two restaurants now. You know, I knew what the Canadian or the American way, you know, girls. Our girls were still with the long hair tied up. You know what I mean? And no lipstick, no nothing. And then with their mothers, they go, whatever the mother went, uh, the daughter went, the mother had to be there just in case somebody's going to steal it. <laughs> I saw this little, beautiful little thing. So anyhow, she, I said, hello. Uh, she turned around, she took off like a deer. And uh, she had a cousin, Sophie, you know. You remember Sophie? Uh, that she made him married to Mila? Oh, yes. Sophie. I knew her because she used to be, she wanted to nail this guy, Jack Nikoloff, you know, when I first went in, I knew her. It was Sophie. But he didn't, he didn't like her. So I see this Sophie. I say, Sophie. I said, do you know who this is? She's my cousin. So I said, well, but, so she come around, and again she come around, you know, Foxy, come around <laughs> to see her brother, you know, Jim. And I'm standing there. She come around, I said, ah, oh, you're beautiful. I said, what's your name? She said, who wants to know? I said, I want to know. She said, well, my name is Violet. And that's how, 1950. 1932? 1932, the last picnic. Where were these picnics? At Lambton. Right. Lambton Park. Do you remember who the um, uh, the the orchestras were at that time? Oh, uh, what's his name? The guy, guy with the clarinet. Mircho. Mircho. Mircho, most of them. Then there was another guy, Udarmensko, with a trumpet. He had a. He was good. And uh, that was wonderful. That was wonderful. That was a, a wonderful time of uh, life in Toronto. We're going to go back to that uh, in a minute. It's a picnic. Yeah. yeah, Bob, we're going to talk a little bit now about uh, your youth in Toronto. Well, then I'm coming back, you know, I'll, uh -huh. I'll, about the youth. Uh -huh. Now we can go with the picnic when I, when I met, but she was a stranger. I just met her and that's it. Well, tell us a little about, do we want more uh, about your uh, 
uh, life with uh, Violet later, but uh, tell yes. us how well you uh, uh, interacted with the other uh, Macedonians in Toronto. Who did you find here? How you uh, went to? What was your uh, social life? Tell us a little about that. Okay. What do you want? When I met Violet that day, she was a strange person to me, but she was beautiful, and I wanted find out where she was or where she lived. So when I came back in the restaurant the next night, I went next door and there was a fellow there. His name was Alec Filkov. And this man, he was quite a man about town. I asked him if he knows this woman, this girl that I met at the picnic. And of course, I found out that she was a Grosdanov. Oh, yes, he says. Don't you know? He said, where have you been all your life? He said, there's a Macedonian hall. There's a church. And there said, there's hundreds and hundreds of Macedonians there. All the families from Toronto, they go to 95 Trinity Street. Now, do you stand? I said, oh. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take you Sunday. They have concerts every Sunday. So, sure. We left at 7 o'clock on Sunday. We went down it. We got off the King Car on Trinity. We walked down half a block. And there it was, 95 Trinity Street. We went in there and the place is full. Full. Unbelievable. There was a concert going on. And there was a stage play. And they're playing a good Macedonian skit. Well, you know, uh, jokingly, there was the uh, the professor, and there was, the, and uh, there was the the, the pro Greek, the Karkoman, you know, mm -hmm. and there was the the Bulgaroman, and <laughs> they had a skit in there. <laughs> Being, I wasn't oriented, you know, into the Macedonia, as I told you, I just mm -hmm. come in, and I just went to this picnic and come back. And uh, the show started. There was a guy, Lombros of Tirov. He got out in the front. He was a khaki fellow, and he was saying, Nie Makedonside, Nie Kemuna Stojime, Nie Geso Svobodime. Also, he said, Alexander Nigul Kradie Velside which is true, mm -hmm. which I was beginning to, you know, get in my brain that there must be a, a big difference between, uh, you know, the, uh, the Macedonians and the Greeks. And uh, the show started. And it was the Balkan War. I just, when I was born, when I was born, you know, between the, uh, it was between Greece, Bulgaria, and Serbia, kicking out the Turk. Mm -hmm. It's been there 500 years, yeah. which is true, 500 years. And they chased them out. But then they start to fight among themselves. And the Gurk was Giro Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, was a, he was a skinny guy, <laughs> very funny. And the Bulgarian <laughs> was Lambro Sotiro, heavy, <laughs> you know, with a jaw. And it was the Macedonian, or the Bulgar, if you say, with a mustache and a bit, you know. And they start to fight. So the two, the Serbian and the uh, Bulgarian, they got together, and they were going to choke this Greek. He's the troublemaker. So anyhow, they had a little window there in the hall. You remember you know, all this? On the yeah. stage, yeah. And this is my first time. Yeah. And uh, they... <laughs> Anyhow, the Bulgarian says, well, show go Polish to a church. Breda go poti to a kuche te karko. So, Sarbino stala. And he rushed to get the Greek. But the, the, the way it was done, the door opened, you know, instead of a window. And they got him by the leg, but he escaped. Giro <laughs> Zolomo. The Greek, you know. They didn't catch him. And I says, hooray. I got up. I started to clap. Jesus. 
they, start, they put the lights on. They stopped the whole show. Two came on Gurkuman. One, out. So two guys came in, two Lex Koski brothers. You know, they were from Kosturtsko there. And they got me by the neck and they threw me out. I said, what, what in the world they threw me out for? I didn't realize. Then when I went back, you know, at the restaurant and I went next door to this Alec Filkar, he said, don't you know? I had no idea what was going on. I was educated in Greek and nothing but Greek. And that was, that was what's wrong with the, with the, with the youth mm -hmm. that we came here. And that was what's wrong with the youth that was educated in Greece. Yeah. Even to this day. Especially this day. Especially today. Mm -hmm. And I listen to the radio. And I, I can, every word, I get my ear on that radio, I listen. They threw me out. But I already fell in love with this little lady. And uh, I said, never mind that I like, forget about the day. <laughs> What's happened? I said, what about this girl? He says, no, oh, I'll show you. So he gave me the, the address and the name. So I went down, sure. They had a butcher shop down on Queen and Jones. So I got my cousin done. Now, what interests me most of all, because most of our girls, you know, they had big ankles and they were short in the knees. <laughs> And I wanted to uh, see if she's from the back. <laughs> so I took my cousin down, and I parked. And I said, you go in and look at the shelf, you know, behind the cash register. And the order the tallest, so there was some sardines, he said. And she came out, Violet. And he says, I want two cans of sardines up there. So she went up on the step to reach the sardines. And you had a good look. <laughs> I said, that's it. That's my baby. And there she is. And then uh, when did you get married? 1935. Mm -hmm. 1933. Uh, they didn't want me, by the way. You know, they call me what they call a Gurkoman. I was a little bit uh, educated in Greek. And my name, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Papas, and uh, the Grozanov, and uh, your father, and 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 Silo and Nichols, and all of them, Palmarov. They said, "No way. He must be pro Greek. It gotta be. Where is he from? Geneva? Oh my God! It's the worst village. <laughs> no way. We they couldn't do nothing for us with Violet. We're too deeply in love already. Yeah. So and we got engaged in 1933." Uh, we engaged one year, then we intended to get married in '34, but his poor mother died on on, the, on Mother's Day, May the 8th, 1934. Her mother died, so we had to postpone the wedding. And we got married October the 6th, 1935. Yeah. And uh, the war started. Was it after the war, Violet? Well, 1934, uh, uh, 35 years. When we got married? Oh, yes. Well, we had the stockyard. Yeah. We had the two restaurants. And uh, we moved on the junction area. We bought a house there. And I was running the stockyard. Where did you buy your house? On Let's 46 see. Roundtree Avenue. Roundtree? Roundtree. Just north of Sinclair. Mm -hmm. And we had Helen there, our daughter, and, uh, and Larry, and two children. And the war was over. So you had the stockyards all the time during that time? It was, the war was over. Yeah. And uh, this guy, Filkov, he married my cousin, first cousin. Uh -huh. He worked for the people next door, and he met this Stella, my cousin, and he married her. And he says to me, aren't you tired of this restaurant business? You know, we used to go at night, one o'clock, we close and chit-chat. 
He says, I want to go with some other business. So we talked about all kinds of different ways what to do, how to go in business, you know, including the funeral part. Okay. He says, I'm not afraid from dead people. He says, I said, not me, never, never will. So we decided to buy a dairy. And we looked all over Metro. And there was a, a Jewish dairy on Palmerston and College. And we approached these people. There were four Jewish partners. And they were fighting. They're not, not getting along. And we bought it. $25,000. $5,000 down. What year was this? 1947. And, and we took over February 1st, 1947. And uh, it was you and uh, Phil Kahn? Phil Kahn. And then after that we took his brother-in-law. He was a good man. And uh, in no time at all, because I spoke Greek and Macedonia, I approached all the restaurants, pro-Greek or pure Greek, or strictly Macedonian, and we begin to go ahead. We're getting very good indeed. Eventually, we built out 25 trucks wholesale. In 1948, I went down at the, with uh, Valet's father. I became the secretary of building a new church in Syria. We're moving from Trinity to 237, then that's Sackville. With, uh, Sackville. And I became the secretary of the building committee. And we did. In 1950, we built the church. And who were the, um, the principals there, uh, the, the main people that started that church? Well, well Father Ilyev, of course, he was the, 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 the reverend at that time. And uh, there was a fellow named Boris Petrov. There was uh, uh, a fellow uh, Boris Damov. There was uh, Krasdanov, of course, her father. And there was uh, oh, quite a few, quite a few. They were very eager. And Willie, like uh, Vanya Zhuglov, uh, Slavo Zhuglov from Bombo, and uh, so many, like Pagliari, the old man. They're numerous, absolutely. They're, they're running all over us. Was Lambros Sotirov with that? Uh, he died. But he, but he was with uh, the St. Cyril group. Oh, he? yes, he was with us. And uh, we had a celebration on New Year's Eve. At, uh, he was with the Father Ilyev in the car. I was a car behind. And uh, they stopped the car and they jumped. They started to holler. Uh, what's the matter? Rambo Sotiro took a heart attack. In the car? In the car. And he died on Brownview. Oh, dear. Yeah. I didn't know that. 1949. Of course, we had uh, Dr. Manin. He was behind the whole thing. Mm -hmm. you know, although he's Bulgarian, by the way. Mm -hmm. But he was 100% with us. Yes. Absolutely. He was a great man. Yes. And he died. As soon as we opened a new church, he died. Yes. In 49. So we lost two good members, Lama Sotiro and Dr. Manin. Yeah. But uh, we became... Uh, Absolutely. In the city of Metro, in those days, the mayor and so on, they used to come in. They used to come in on a holiday, on Christmas, or some occasion we had. Well, it was a wonderful thing, that uh, church. Yes, yes. It was, it was uh, quite a, a building to begin with. Oh, absolutely. You can't build it for a million dollars. Do you want to tell us what, what uh, that church had in it? Tell us something about the, uh, the church, how it was built, and... Uh, well, it's quite unique as far as uh, churches go. Well, we we had the, the, the bishop. He was uh, telling us how to 
you know, how to build it, put the, the entrance. And by the way, Kersto Stoyanov from Zhilevo, he was the, the chief of the building committee. And uh, he used to direct, you know, the, the subcontracts, what they call. And I was with him almost every day to, uh, so there were some incidents, in other words, uh, they, the bishop wanted a kube, you know what I mean, like the, you know, like in Moscow, you know, the, the domes there? Oh, have. yes, uh-huh. Well, Kirsten Stoyano didn't want the dome. He wanted a, where the bell is in the front, mm -hmm. you know, make it higher. No, there was an argument there, and the, the old man was stubborn, however, he resented. Then we put the kube in the center of the church, and uh, they're doing something there now. I went by there. Uh, are they making that higher? No, I don't know what they're doing. I don't. It know. was uh, covered covered in uh, scaffolding all around there, so I don't well, know. Maybe what it's they're... leaking or something. Maybe. I don't know. In any case, we uh, it was tremendous. I'll tell you. Everybody was falling over each other to become a member. Mm -hmm. yes, I'll I tell you, that. we had uh, all the first class Macedonians, not only from Toronto, but Hamilton, Windsor, mm -hmm. and so on. Well, uh, when I met to the church was unique, uh, uh, not only in design, but uh, it had a, a huge hall. Oh, tremendous. And you could sit 700 people, easy. And uh, another yeah. hall at the side, plus the, uh, a big bowling alley. Yes. And the bowling, bowling alley, alley yeah, brought up a lot of people. We had a hall downstairs for about 200, then the bowling alley, 10 pin. We had 10 alleys. Mm -hmm. alley. So a lot and of people came uh, to that church. And we subscribed or joined 10 teams, 10, of five men each. 50 men, the cream of the Macedonian people in Metro, in the bowling alley. Mm -hmm. We were there 10 years. Then we, on Mondays, on Tuesdays, we organized couples. It was beautiful, couples. And every Tuesday, after bowling, we'd go to some restaurant anywhere, whichever, usually a, you know, a, man, a member that belonged, and have a sandwich and so on. It was, it was absolutely super. The, um, and tell us something uh, uh, about your activities there at the church, the, show, the social. The uh, social was, well, of course, every, uh, the auxiliary, the woman auxiliary, they would uh, set up the social life for the whole year. All the holidays, all the get-togethers, all the dances. The, the bowling uh, uh, members having a banquet, banquet. Uh, that hall, I'll tell you, it was busy every night. Just like now, now it's it's the Macedonian church, mm -hmm. which I listened to. At that time, it was in Cyril and Method. That's right, it was. On 650 families they belonged. And I was right thick with a, it was, well, it was my idea about being in the milk business. Mm -hmm. I was agitating, you know, and talking to people. And of course, we was, uh, the colony became famous in Metro, not only in Metro, but in Ontario and Canada. And some of the MPPs, they used to come in there, they were glad to see us. They've never seen a circle dance like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Two or three hundred people doing in the dance, like they do now at uh, at the Macedonian church. And I'm very proud of the Macedonian. The, remember, we're a generation ahead. Now this generation, that's Sri Clement mm -hmm. and the other churches, they are the core now, like uh, three foot, like the other. Now we must support them. Mm -hmm. We must support them with every means. We cannot ever turn our back to them. Never. Because we're going to lose our roots. We're going to assimilate and disappear. We don't want to do that. Now that Macedonia is free, 
We have to support it. Absolutely. We'll go and visit it. For God's sake, it's down in, deep in our hearts. It's a wonderful one. Mm -hmm. you know? So in my coming back to my dairy business, it, it built up. It built up 25 wholesale trucks and uh, a little uh, DP boy from Genova. <laughs> he came president and represented up at Queen's Park and here there with a milk board and so on and you so on. You did? Oh, yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't become an MPP. I didn't want to go into politics. I didn't. And maybe it's my fault because I got completely involved with our people and our, our Macedonia with the MPO. I was president for 20 years. Of the MPO? Of the MPO. But that was St. George's. Wasn't that St. George's Church or no. was it both? We were engaged. Then they separated. That was their business from Sincerely and Methody, the MPO. Well, uh, let's get into that. Two uh, branches. There are two branches. Um, tell us something about the MPO. How, well, how you got started and uh, tell us uh, about that because well, we, I don't know very much about when, it. Uh, uh, when Sincerely became popular in a beautiful hall in a church, there was a lot of people coming in which they're not MPOs. Now the, the, the St. George's people, they got mad. They said, you're either Bulgarian or you're nothing. You understand? St. George's said that. Yes. You have to be Bulgarian, Macedonian, Bulgarian. Not just plain Macedonian. But uh, not plain Macedonian. But we let everybody that was calling himself Macedonian. I said, we're all the same. And as I said, we built 650 families. The place was falling all over. They were jealous, and they, they were isolated. They were isolated. And there was controversy within themselves. We were represented like I was a delegate for I don't know how many years in a row in the, in the conventions. And we insisted that call ourselves Macedonian, not Bulgarians. Don't do that. Because we have... Macedonia and Yugoslavia, we have Macedonia and Greece, and you cannot join. Bulgaria cannot take us home. They tried and they lost. Bulgaria was cut to pieces trying to get Macedonia. We should be Macedonia and nothing else. That's what's happening today. Today, we're on the threshold mm -hmm. of pushing Greece to recognize us. Mm -hmm. and, and the Bulgarians, they're silent, but they're sympathetic, mm -hmm. you know, because the language is similar. They're sympathetic, and they are the first ones to recognize Macedonia, the Bulgarian government. And in Bulgaria, there's three million Macedonians, just mm -hmm. like you and I, mm -hmm. like your dad, I'm, you know, my father and my son and my grandson and so on. There's three million into Bulgaria, and they're all got their ears. Mm -hmm. They're listening what's happening. Let's get back to the MPO. Um, you say you were, uh, did you say you were president of... Uh, of the MPO, Pravda. Uh, when, did, when did you become president? Since once I got married, 1936. As soon as I got married, Dedo Nako, her father. He, he was said, MPO? Oh, I'm When did MPO start? 1922. 1922. Mm -hmm. It started in the United States, oh. and it spread like a wildfire. Uh -huh. There was nothing else. And when I joined the Virginia, I I loved the name Macedonia. And the name, what was it called then? MPO. Yeah, and Macedonia. Nothing else. Macedonian political organization. organization. They never mentioned either. Serbian or Greek or Bulgarian. And they also they set up, they put up a paper, mm -hmm. <coughs> and the paper said Macedonian Tribune, and that got me to stay with them and work for them, which I did. I spent money and time. I could have been a politician. In, in now, I'm going to move on a little bit because we're coming to the end of the tape. Okay. Uh, how long did you have your dairy? 1947 to 1960. Then we 
due to the uh, uh, market condition, you know, the home delivery and all that was stopped, and the Beckers and Max start to open up. We merged with Valley View oh. on Payton Danford, mm -hmm. and we strictly wholesale restaurants and hotels. And uh, in 1970, I retired. In 1970, we joined Silverwoods. They were in trouble. So Parkdale, Valley View, and uh, we went with Silverwoods. In 1970, I retired. And Silverwoods bought you out, or is that how it was? Or? Well, we bought the business, not the land. They bought the business. And I retired at that time. And we went ahead with our society. There's another angle, you know, that I work with the Jelleville Brotherhood Society. Mm -hmm. We built a building on 331 on Western Road. Oh, yeah, Jelleville Hall. Oh, yes. Yeah, and well. we had some big doors there. And uh, then the, the boys, uh, they begin to go away, like, you know, they married the uh, Italian or Polish or whatever, and uh, we thought there was no future. So we sold that, and we bought uh, a golf course in Lake Simcoe. Oh. El Kona Golf Course. Oh, that's what, the, that's what happened to that. We were there seven years. Yeah, I was there every the year. Jennifer, the money from Jennifer Hall we, yes, bought we, the we, Al Alcona Golf? That's right. We sold Jennifer Hall, I didn't know that. and we bought El Kona Golf. Very interesting. Yeah. And, and uh, does the Genovo uh, organization still own Alcon? No, we sold it. We just sold that recent, too. Just re recently, yeah. Okay, we're just going to go back now. Uh, tell us uh, the, uh, the names of your children and grandchildren, and then. Uh, huh. We got eight. We got two children, Helen and Larry. Larry had five children. And two wives. Oh. He divorced one. Helen married John Evans, Macedonia. Uh -huh. And they have three children, two boys and a girl. The boys are married. And they they both have two children each. So we have eight grandchildren and four great grandchildren. That's terrific. Um you want to give us the names of um of the grandchildren, and then we're going to get some pictures in of uh, what you have of your, because you have yeah, some yes, of your we, grandchildren yeah, around we here. We have uh, Larry, Helen's, Larry, I mean uh, Philip, Helen's children. Yes. Philip. <laughs> Is he the hockey Peter? player? Yes, He's both. A... They were at Harvard, both of them. Oh. Yeah. It cost them nothing to graduate from Harvard. Philip and Peter, and Dina Lee, she is not married, she will be soon. That's Helen's children. Mm -hmm. And the two boys, they have two children each, one of each. Philip, he's got Courtney, a girl, and Hayden, a boy. Peter has Caitlin, a girl, and Justin, a boy. Larry, my son, as I say, from the first wife, which was Macedonia, Gina, maybe you know, mm -hmm. he had uh, Stacy, Anastasia, and Robert, too. Then he married an Italian girl. She divorced Gina. And with uh, the Italian, he had a son, Christopher, and twins. Isn't that nice? Twins. Uh, Jonathan and what's the girl's name? Jennifer. Jennifer. Well, we'd like to get uh, uh, a Violet in here and uh, show uh, how beautiful she still is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Come on now, come on. Now we're going to get you in just for a little this bit. This is your last chance. She is the one that made my life what it is today. 58 years married life. Wonderful. That's wonderful. And she is very religious. 
Thank God. She's clannish. She loves the Macedonians. Every time I go out of my, you know, out, she pulls me in. And I like that. Violet, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself. Uh, where were you born in the year? I was born in 1914. And your parents? My parents, of course. Were? Or Vrdnik, also. And your, uh, your parents' names? My father was Marco Grusano. Uh -huh. He was the mayor of the town. And my mother's name was Elena. And uh, my father, of course, was here. And first of all, he brought my brother, Chris, here with my aunt. When did your father come? When did he leave uh, my, Vernick? My father left Vernick uh, 1914. That's a right after I was born. He escaped, yes. 1914 he came to the States, but he was here before. Then he went back to the village. Then came back in 1914 here. And he took your uh, brother, uh, what year was that? Chris came here in uh, 1921 with, with uh, Strina and their son. And Who was your Strina? Uh, my uncle, uh, my father's brother's wife. My uncle was Stavro, Christo. And John, their son. John was their son. Do you want to give some last names so that... Uh, uh, John, Aristo Grosano, Pinaco Grosano for brother. Aristo, okay. Yeah, they were here. And first of all, Aristo brought his wife and uh, their son. Then in 1921, they brought uh, my uncle's wife and their son, and my brother came with them. My brother Chris. Uh -huh. In 1923, I came with my mother to Canada. And how, um, how did uh, he win your heart when you met him? Deep, deeply. Who's this guy? Yeah, that guy. How did you oh, feel when you first oh, met when him? I first, that was it. Yeah. Well, he was and telling us how he uh, tried to get. Oh, yeah. yes. He used to meet me at school, after school. Every day. And no matter how many times my dad drove up with the car trying to find out, he never caught us. <laughs> well, that was it. <laughs> yeah. It was a wonderful love affair. Was Romance. A lovely marriage. We had a good marriage. To this very day. day. Good marriage. And May God give us a And I hope more. you have a lot more years. Thank I you. I hope so. I hope he gets better. Oh, we're, we're all I want, one, nothing satisfied. else in life, but for my husband to get better. <laughs> That's all I want. Okay. What we'd like to do is, um, you can point out some of your grandchildren here, and we'll take some pictures take of them. Some of the pictures. Oh, yeah. And we'll see some. Uh, take some pictures of uh, something around here too. Yeah. What, what and point to it, so you'll be when in there. She was too. born. This is Helen. She was born 1936. She was 16 years old there. She had the picture taken. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is our son Larry. He was 11 years old there. Born in 1941. Yeah. Union Church in Genoa, 1908. Permission to have a service in the Slavic language. It's the first day, a big celebration. Doc Marcus? Peter. He's a doctor. He's an orthopedic doctor. She's a secretary. Probably. For a neuro neurosurgeon. This is a cello. Bob K. 
took me to see Jalabo. I simply had to see that town. And where was your house uh, here? Behind the, behind the willow tree. Oh, I understand there's not much left of Jalabo right now. There's only 22 people in the village. Though. There was 2,600. Sad, sad. Let's see, there's the one church, the other church is over here where the cemeteries are. And this, no, that's the highway this uh, going to Larry and Kostur. This way goes to Larry, to Kostur, that way to Larry. And she lived to be 99 years. That's your mom? That's my mommy. What a wonderful Macedonian human being. Was she uh, here or did she? Here. Yeah, yeah. She was here from 1938. She came here. 